In this video, you'll see how to accelerate SQL Server deployments with AWS Launch Wizard. With this service, you can automate AWS resource selection to meet your requirements, dynamically generate cost estimates, and deploy production-ready applications that adhere to AWS best practices. From the AWS Management Console, navigate to Launch Wizard to get started. AWS Launch Wizard is a service that guides you through the sizing, configuration, and deployment of enterprise applications following AWS Cloud Application Best Practices. Let's create a deployment. AWS Launch Wizard is currently available for Microsoft SQL Server and SAP applications. For the purposes of this example, we'll select SQL Server. The first time you use AWS Launch Wizard, it automatically creates a default AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, role in your account, granting it permissions to deploy and access resources for this and future deployments. Proceed to the next step. Specify the name you want the fully deployed application to have in the AWS Launch Wizard deployments listing. Next, let's create a simple notification service, or SNS, topic for this deployment. Give the SNS topic a name. For this example, retain the default settings and create the topic. Close the tab and return to the wizard. Select the Refresh button and then open the SNS Topic drop-down list. As you can see, the topic we just created is now available. Select it and then scroll down the page. Next, choose or create a key pair to securely connect with your Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or Amazon EC2 instances. In this case, we'll select a key pair that has already been created for our purposes. Next, choose or create a Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, to deploy the application on. Note that the VPC must contain the appropriate prerequisites of at least one public subnet and two private subnets in different availability zones with outbound connectivity to the Internet and other AWS resources. In accordance with AWS best practices, these prerequisites exist because this is a multi-node SQL High Availability HA, deployment, where each node is deployed in a separate Availability Zone, or AZ, to provide greater fault tolerance on the SQL HA workload. We'll select the SQL Server VPC, which was previously created to meet these prerequisites. If you don't have a public subnet that meets the prerequisites, you can create one. In this case, an appropriate subnet is available. Next, you'll need to choose at least two availability zones and corresponding subnets. If you're unsure about the requirements, you can click the associated Info link. Let's take a look. Many steps in this wizard have an Info link to provide additional guidance about the choices you are making. In this case, the sidebar provides information about availability zones and private subnets, as well as links to pertinent documentation and resources. Let's take a quick look at the technical documentation. Now let's close out and continue through the wizard. Select two distinct availability zones and corresponding private subnets. Note that you have the option to create new subnets if you need to. Select the checkbox to confirm that the selected subnets meet the requirements. You can optionally set up remote desktop gateway access by providing your current IP address or defining a CIDR in an existing security group. In this case, leave this option set to the IP address and move on. Instances launched by AWS Launch Wizard for SQL Server will be domain joined to an Active Directory, or AD. You can select either an existing AWS managed AD or an on premises AD. You can also have the wizard create a new AWS managed software AD for your deployment. Let's do so. Specify a password. Next, define the root domain for the Active Directory you're creating. For our purposes, let's define a placeholder domain. Now, let's define the SQL Server parameters. Since you're creating a new Active Directory, you must create a new service account. The service account will act as an admin member on each SQL Server node resource created to make up the SQL Server. Specify a username and password. Next, you must choose the install type for the EC2 instances that will be deployed as part of the SQL Server application deployment. 
If you have a custom Amazon machine image, or AMI, you can choose that. For the purposes of this example, we'll select an AWS-provided, license-included AMI. Let's select an AMI with 2019 editions of Windows Server and SQL Server Standard installed. You can optionally provide additional SQL Server settings, including primary and secondary SQL node names, or the database name. For our purposes, let's move on. Next, you must define the infrastructure of the EC2 instances and Amazon Elastic Block Store or Amazon EBS volume stores to be automatically deployed by the wizard. If you specify your primary needs, AWS will suggest a configuration it deems appropriate and provide a cost estimate at the bottom of the page. Otherwise, if you already know the configuration you want, you can select the Choose Your Instance option to specify it. In this case, let's use a configuration suggested by AWS. By default, AWS suggests the lowest possible configuration allowed. You can modify these selections as needed. Let's increase our requirements and see how the recommended configuration changes. As you can see, changing our memory and storage throughput performance caused the launch wizard's recommended resources to update. Let's scroll down to see more. Here you can define the required volume for each of your disks, as well as their drive letters and provision input-output operations per second, or IOPS. Let's retain the default settings and continue. You can optionally define tags that can be associated with single resource types created by the launch wizard, or tags that apply to all resources created in deploying the SQL Server application. Let's move on. Here is the estimated monthly cost of our configuration, including costs associated with the created Active Directory resources. This estimate updates dynamically to reflect changes in the Launch Wizard recommendations or user selections. Proceed to the next step. Here you can review the full range of resources to be either utilized or created by the Launch Wizard. Read the acknowledgement to agree to the resources and their estimated cost, and then deploy the application. Deployment of a fully functioning, production-ready, SQL Server Always-On application takes around two hours. Let's skip ahead in time to when it's finished. Now that the full provisioning is complete, let's inspect the resources created by the launch wizard, starting with the high-level deployment details. Here you can see an overview of all the processes that went into the deployment of the SQL Server application. If any event had failed, you would be able to see the cause of its failure. Let's take a look at the summary page. Here you can see all the resources created and their names. Let's return to the deployments page and see how you can manage the resources you created. First, select the deployment. Next, select an action from the menu. Let's start by looking at the created instances in the EC2 console. Here are two EC2 instances created in the deployment, one for each availability zone, with the instance type defined in the launch wizard. These instances are ready to use and access. Close the tab and return to the deployments page. Next, let's view the deployments resource group with Systems Manager. These are all the resources either created by or associated with the launch wizard deployment. From Systems Manager, you can manage, patch, and maintain your SQL Server Always On application. Return to the Deployments page. Finally, let's look at the CloudFormation template that was created, which defines the automation process that creates or associates relevant resources with the deployment. As you can see, various CloudFormation stacks have been deployed by AWS Launch Wizard. Let's look at the parent stack and view its created resources and template. Navigate to the Events tab. Here you can see a more detailed view of some of the events that went into creating resources necessary for the SQL Server deployment. Navigate to the Resources tab. Here are the five resources this stack created. Finally, let's look at the template for this stack. This template can be reused and customized for subsequent deployments. For a visualization of the code, select View in Designer.
Here you can view the template side by side with the architecture used for the SQL Server application deployment. You've just seen how to accelerate SQL Server always on deployments with AWS Launch Wizard. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.